Many see the birth of economics in its modern form with the publication of Adam Smith's inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. It turns out that economic issues have been considered long before that, at least as far back as the ancient Greeks. And core economic ideas that certainly influenced the Austrian school are present significantly before Adam Smith, for example, among the Spanish scholastics like Juan de Mariana. Juan de Mariana was an early Jesuit, joining the Society of Jesus at age 16. In his early life, he taught theology in Rome, Sicily, and then Paris, before returning to Spain, being based in Toledo, from 1574 until his death at the age of 87. As was true of many early economic thinkers, Mariana's main concerns in his economic writings were political and moral. However, the content of these writings provide the core economic insights that influenced early Austrians like Karl Menger and continue to be foundational to our economic understanding today. To provide the necessary background, we need to first look at a book about political philosophy, Mariana's On the King and the Royal Institution, published in 1598. In this book, Mariana rather bravely defended tyrannicide, suggesting that any citizen can justly assassinate a king who imposes taxes without the consent of the people, seizes the property of individuals and squanders it, or prevents a meeting of a democratic parliament. Naturally, kings tended not to like this book, but it made an important point. Even the king is under the greater natural moral law, and then proposed the practical method by which a king who made a habit of violating moral law could be punished. From an economic standpoint, this contribution is most significant. Mariana recognized that private property rights override the whims of the state. This theme was further developed in On the Alteration of Money in 1605. In this book, Mariana suggests that the king does not, in fact, have proper claims to the property of his vassals or citizens. This allows for Mariana to draw a clear distinction between a king and a tyrant. He says, a tyrant is he who tramples everything underfoot and believes everything to belong to him. The king restricts or limits his covetousness within the terms of reason and justice. In effect, a king is one who recognizes his subject's right to control their own property. For Mariana, this idea had profound consequences. In particular, the king cannot legitimately set up government monopolies, as these effectively are taxing your citizens without their consent. Where Mariana's economic understanding shines through, though, is in his description of the consequences of currency debasement. Writing from a moral perspective, Mariana is clear that the king must not obtain fiscal revenue by lowering the metal content of coins. To those of us used to our paper-based currencies, this is a somewhat unfamiliar idea, so let's go back to the age when Mariana was writing. At this point in time, various precious metals, typically gold or silver, were used throughout much of the world as money. In many places, government had control over the minting of coins. Conceptually, minting services serve an important purpose. For the market, it's a signification of quality. Once monopolized by governments, however, minting allows governments to raise revenues by decreasing the quality of coins. Suppose that the money is gold-based. In that case, a government may collect taxes in old, nearly pure, gold coins then it could remint these coins, either shrinking them or diluting the gold with some cheaper metal like copper. This allows for the creation of more coins from the same gold, and this new money can be used to fund government expenditures. For Mariana, this is just another, albeit sneakier, form of taxation without consent. For now, rather than directly taking the goods that the people have, the tyrant simply dilutes the value of the people's money holdings, as Mariana understood that increasing the money supply through debasement would lead to money losing value. The result being that, as he says, all goods increase unavoidably. In the same proportion, the money fell in value and all the accounts break down. So Mariana already shows an understanding that supply and demand determine exchange values. And this theory can be applied to money and that a sound money is essential for economic calculation. The role of supply and demand is in many ways the backbone of modern economics. The application of supply and demand to understand overall changes in prices is a key insight that Austrians, Mises in particular, built on in the construction of monetary theory. And the importance of money in economic calculation is another key Austrian insight. In his views of supply and demand, Mariana is explicitly subjectivist, stating that men are guided by common estimation founded on considerations of the quality of things and of their abundance or scarcity. Mariana's subjectivism was inherited from earlier scholastics, in particular, Diego de Covarrubias y Leva.
This bishop of Segovia, and minister to King Philip, set out the subjectivist theory of value in 1554, stating that the value of an article does not depend on its essential nature, but on the subjective estimation of men, even if that estimation is foolish. Another scholastic picked up on this subjectivism, Luis Saravia de la Calle, who suggested that those who measure the just price by labor, costs, and risk incurred by the person who deals in the merchandise are greatly in error. The just price is found not by counting cost, but by common estimation. And, as Mariana showed us, that common estimation is based on the buyer's consideration of the good's qualities and the abundance or scarcity of the good. So, scholastics provided a theory of value that accounted for subjective demands for goods interacting with the good's abundance or scarcity, resulting in market prices. It was Mariana that took these insights and applied them to money itself. It was on that basis that Mariana objected to currency debasement. By unavoidably decreasing the value of money, debasement is a tax on those who hold money a tax leveled without their consent, and therefore the mark of a tyrant. I hope unsurprisingly, the scholastics were very aware of the limited ability of human beings to understand the market process as a whole, or what we today would call general equilibrium. They reached the conclusion that only God, not men, can understand it exactly, given the complexity of the information involved. This appreciation for the complexity of economic phenomena gives rise to an understanding of the importance of accounting and allowing each business person to evaluate their own contributions. This appreciation for the role of accounts in organizing economic activity led Mariana to point out that currency debasement leads accounts to break down, as the monies accounted for at different points in time do not have the same value. So the important informational role is interfered with. Mariana also understood the problems that can arise with central planning, which were emphasized by Hayek nearly 350 years later. In Mariana's Discourse on the Sicknesses of the Jesuit Order, Mariana criticized the hierarchical nature of the Jesuits, stating that power and command is mad, power is far away, the general does not know the people or the facts, at least with all the circumstances that surround them, on which success depends. It is unavoidable that many serious errors will be committed, and the people are displeased thereby and despise such blind government. It is a great mistake for the blind to wish to guide the sighted. So on the basis of the problem of transmitting information about the specifics of time and place to a central authority, Mariana suggested that central authorities are bound to commit serious errors, as their decision-making is, as Mises would say, a stabbing in the dark. Some, like Jesus Cuarta de Soto, have suggested that when you really look at the writings of the Spanish scholastics, like Juan de Mariana, and the writings of such men as Karl Menger, Ludwig von Mises, or F.A. Hayek, one must conclude that the Austrian school was founded, ultimately not in Austria, but in Spain, over 200 years before Menger was even born. For more content like this, visit Mises.org.